You guys, two arm bars and a triangle walk into the octagon. It sounds like a bad joke, but it's not. It actually happened. UFC 216, let's do this. Class, Monday morning, the dedicated crew is here. This is our last week here at the Gracie Academy, 3515 Artesia Boulevard. We're moving next week, but we got a lot to talk about from this UFC. Fabrizio Verdum versus Walt Harris, a last minute stand in. His opponent was hurt like the day before the fight. We talk about last minute, so this is last day, last minute, as much as it gets. So thank you for stepping in. Thanks for stepping in, Walt. And Fabrizio, amazing, beautiful. He steps in, little engagement. He steps in on the single leg here, controls. Eventually, he falls down. He ends up kind of an open half guard right here and very quickly mounts. We're talking 50, 60 seconds in. He gets to the mount. A couple strikes, but oh yeah, then Walt goes for the hip thrust mount escape, pushes the hips, both knees come through, and he's inside right here. Right away, Fabrizio goes on top and Walt goes to his knees, trying to turtle to build the house and get up, which is so typical in MMA because they want to get back to their feet, especially if Fabrizio's on top of you. The challenge, when Fabrizio's on top of you, that's pretty much the end of the rainbow. Mm -hmm. So he's here. Now here's what's crazy about jiu-jitsu guys in MMA. There's two types. There's guys who know jiu-jitsu and there's guys who are jiu-jitsu. And Fabrizio? Is jiu-jitsu. So he lands, and how can you tell the difference? The guys who know jiu-jitsu, they put their hip pressure and they strike from here. And they strike, and they try to get that TKO. And they strike, and they strike, and they strike. Come on, strike. come on, come on, it's not that bad. <laughs> You're right, they punch a little more than they need to. Well, here's the thing. Well, it's because their confidence in jiu-jitsu is not quite the same as Fabrizio. So and Fabrizio, did, what did he do? They believe that if they put the hooks in, that they're gonna lose the position. That's a big concern. So the guys who know jiu-jitsu want to stay on top, even if you pull guard right now. When you say position, you mean top of the top fight. Top of the fight to the bottom. Yes. Even on the back mount, they don't want to be on the bottom of the fight. There's a yes. policy, and there's some very famous fighters who adhere to that policy, and they never put their back on the ground, even if it means having the back mount. Fabrizio's not one of those guys. You don't care. So he's here. Uh, uh, Walt starts to, Fabrizio just jumps his hooks in and gets an over-under. They fall instantly, and Walt does the right thing, which is go two-on-one on, on the choking hand. Now, Fabrizio knows triple threat weak side, you guys. So he lands on the, he has a great coach in Cobrinha, uh, Cobrinha Jiu Jitsu, and he comes inside, he's holding, death grip this please. He makes the smallest angle, his arm that he's holding, he just spins over and he takes it. You guys, this is unbelievable. Yeah. When their correct defense is my perfect setup, that is the beauty of Jiu Jitsu. Two on one, trying to stop the choke. You don't expect Fabrizio to spin like that on your back. You <laughs> expect him to do classic, bare naked oh, choke. Yes. And he probably would have. If the fight was taken to the other side, it might have ended up being a choke. But since he had the underhook, he knows that on the weak side, there is the armbar. Yes. He, he, the thing is this, Walt is so strong that Fabrizio knew to try to break this grip wasn't gonna happen. So he literally just stretched with his hooks, looped his arm, let him keep holding. And then his leg came a second later. And only now did Walt regret death gripping the choking hand that never came to the party. Yeah, you probably regret volunteering. <laughs> For that so fight, the damn. Put the hooks in, <laughs> over under. Now, what Walt could have done is moved himself to the other That's side. That's a different story. Right, and when you move yourself to the other side, now you don't have the under hook. So there's no arm lock. arm lock isn't available. This leg cannot spin around the head anymore. But it's not that much safer. It still would have become something, like I mentioned, a rare naked choke, who knows? Yeah, at this it's point. only a matter of time. Fabrizio would have grabbed the hypothenar eminence, quick pop, came in, tacked in, came in, and sunk the choke. So, you know. Either Fabricio wins or Walt loses. It's a tough bet right there. With Fabricio on your back, <laughs> no one is in good shape. That's too comfortable for him. Amazing. When's the last time you saw the armbar from the back? Hooks in, like from back mount, belly up, back mount. Do you remember one? Rhonda had a bunch from belly down, yep. back mount, where she's like on her knees and she spins and yeah, rolls. Yeah, 140. But belly up, hooks pounds. in, spinning for the arm, sacrificing the neck well, and the back control. Unbelievable. Well, and someone that size. Yes, that's yeah. true. He's moving like he's mighty this mouse. True. Listen, Fabrizio, congratulations. Walt, thank you for taking that fight on the last. When I heard that his original opponent dropped out, I was like, no, we're not going to see Fabrizio do his we're thing. We're not going to see Jiu Jitsu. <laughs> we saw it. Thank you, bros. Listen, Tony Ferguson, Kevin Lee, after two rounds, going back and forth, quite a brawl. Kevin's a very game opponent. Kevin ended up mounted on Tony, and he was rocking him for a minute there. Tony escapes. He, he mounted it was, him. He mounted yeah, on, on Kevin, Tony Ferguson. I was very impressed. Yeah. It's, Kevin's it's, a monster, which means I'm even more impressed with Tony. With what happened in this third round, yes. you guys. So they landed bottom of the guard. Tony's in the bottom here. Kevin's putting some pressure. His elbows rode a little too high in uh, Tony's guard. Tony spun beautifully, caught the arm lock here. Kevin stacked him up a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I was right? sure that Kevin was done. Yeah, he spun under right here. Tony pops out the back, gets the arm. Somehow now at this his... point, 
Kevin really shined and showed his understanding of jujitsu here. He manipulated Tony's uh, leg right here, slipped his head out, stepped over, cross jumped, and they spun back into the guard. So at that moment, two things happened. Number one, Kevin shined. Number two, Tony learned. Tony learned how Kevin responds to guard submissions. And that plays a big part. We're going to show you why in a second. Because when they spun back in the guard, Kevin was very determined to put more pressure and control his hips. So Tony opened his guard, started moving away, and Kevin kept pre pressure forward. When you have someone who exhibits very wrestler behaviors of driving and crushing and putting pressure, you're allowed to open your guard because you don't fear that they're going to get up. And that's what we felt from Kevin in this third round after the armbar failure. He was just trying to lay on top and hold down and maybe win the round. So as he was driving, keep driving, he was here. Then Ke uh, Tony finally got a hold of a wrist. And you see this little battle happening for a quick second. And then suddenly, boom, you see the lockup. He just gets rid of the arm, the most classic. He just literally jumps this arm. Look, not even through which would allow him to keep wrist control. He just knew that Kevin was so determined to come back that he just launched it in and instantly locked up the full triangle. Now here's what's crazy. Normally in a triangle, this arm, we try to redirect it and shove it across. The problem is Tony identified that Kevin is a cross stepper one and a half minutes prior to this. And once you know someone's a cross stepper, they're always a cross stepper. Which means if he would have kept the arm in this region, show him what they would have done, he don't. He probably would have grabbed onto the leg and twisted and maybe stepped over and then he would have given up his back unwind the whole triangle which is a very effective escape from the triangle especially if they've exhibited cross-stepping behaviors but since tony knew that kevin was a cross-stepper he did this the moment they landed here he did this look you guys look look it's out you don't do your cross step. Yeah, you can't. Your arm is in your yeah. own way. He's controlling the center line. And what Tony also knew is that he didn't need the arm across to lock the triangle. Yeah, typically that's necessary for much larger opponents. Now, Tony has very long legs for his division, so he was able to just lock it up no problem, and even with this out his arm being across. Now, some people wonder, can you finish the triangle without the arm across the body? Can you finish the triangle without this arm being across? Don't wonder anymore. <laughs> you just true. did. Tony proved us wrong. If you did think that, let me have your arm across. Some people think that the shoulder actually chokes the artery, but it's not. Well, it does. It does, it but does. it doesn't. It, it in does, but something else will choke it if it's not there. Watch. So if I just squeeze my heels and squeeze my knees right now, rotate a little more so you can really see that exposure. Look at that artery exposure. He's, this, is what, this is what he just pulled the head and he's done. Because the shoulder, entire shoulder structure gets pushed into the chest cavity, which plugs the, the flowing structures of the neck and the chest to prevent that flow. Yeah. All you gotta do is restrict it a little bit, guys, and it's a game over. Now, if, go ahead. Some of them have seen fights where the guy on top like hides the arm and like yes. stalls like this. You guys, some, if you train jujitsu, you've had this happen to you and you hate it. When you lock a triangle, you're almost there and you get this. Okay, and they're here and they're kind of tight. All you gotta do is three things. Hips, palm, fist. Hips, palm, fist. And now you got him right here. Fight's over. One more time. He's tight. Look, your hips go up. Palm strike to the head. Hold his neck up. Palm push if you're rolling. Look at <laughs> Put the fist in the artery, uppercut style, Wolverine. Bring your legs back down. Hug the head. Heels tight. Knees tight. Head pull. Now, right here, I'm just going to squeeze. Now, he's feeling it. He will not stay there. He'll come inside. And when he does, you can redirect the arm and your game over. So Unless it's a cross stepper. Unless it's a cross stepper. <laughs> <laughs> And you guys, that brings us to our main event, or our co-main event, actually, since there were two. 11 consecutive title defenses. Some people are saying greatest of all time. That's and all you gotta do? Rightfully so. That's all, all you gotta, gotta do, do is win 11 <laughs> in a row the greatest of all time? Guys, so here's what made it so impressive. And the question is, is this the most impressive submission in UFC history? That's the question everyone wants to know. Don't ask me. And we wanna know what you guys have to think, and we know what the other one is, and coincidentally, it happens to be the 10 consecutive title defense holder, record holder, previous record holder, which was Anderson Silva, um, and his submission on uh, Chel Sonnen in UFC whatever, fifth round. The reason why this one was so impressive was because DJ had five round, four rounds won, was about to win the fifth round, and still went for it. This is a pretty serious situation. Look at what he did. So they're against the cage over here. Has him in this rear clinch. Control, control, they're doing whatever. And then eventually he just bumps, boom. And he steps over the head before they landed. Well, yeah. Boom. And his leg came over last second. So, and to be very clear as to what, you know, DJ could have done. Yes. But he didn't do. Yes. He could have. I don't, we, we can't really do it. Right. It's happened to me once or twice in training, but he could have done like a suplex. He could have done a suplex and just slammed him on and, his head. And how does a suplex end? Right. Well, they just scramble out of it. Hurts get a headache. They just scramble. On. Yeah. So the threat of the suplex created what? The, yes. This. Like, don't throw yeah, me. Yeah, Ray Borg was very much like, let me break my fall. It's coming. He was going to fly. And then suddenly that flight was cut short. 
and he falls right into a perfectly and set up armbar. And what was most impressive was yeah. the leg landed over the head before he hit the ground, you guys. Watch it again in slow mo. So they're here, he has good base, it's a hip bump, boom. And then by the time they're here, he's already stepping over and the leg is coming over. Yeah, it's the last thing you expect. And there's no doubt that DJ had the endurance to do a suplex. The way that he fights, oh, yeah, the his endurance. name is Mighty Mouse for a reason. Listen. Right, he's non-stop. So the threat of the suplex was so real. Boom, he was so explosive. Don't throw me arm. Yeah. It's amazing. And the fact that, so what was clear when you watch it back a few times was that DJ did not do that with the intention of slamming him and then switch halfway through. He did that hip heist with the intention of getting Ray to open up to catch this armbar, which means that he's done it a thousand times in practice. That was not the first time he's caught that. So would he have won the fight if he just kind of controlled, controlled, hundred percent on top? He would have won the Everyone fight. Everyone knows it, and so Great. does he. Now, the reason why Anderson Silva's fight, when Anderson triangle Chelsonin, was, in my opinion, a better submission. Now this one is more beautiful, and it's it's more video game, and it's more movie, more and that's why we love it. It's it's more Instagram quick views, like you just watch it over and over, and your mind is blown. He didn't need it to save his life. Anderson Silva was on the bottom. He's about to lose that fight. He right. was saved. Jiu-Jitsu Jiu -Jitsu saved, saved him. His life. So he don't loves that submission more. All of you guys love that submission more. You just <laughs> forgot. You forgot what you love because it's what's new right now. That doesn't mean that the, what DJ did wasn't amazing. Right. But don't forget, even DJ himself, when he saw Anderson Silva win like that, he yeah. started crying because yeah. Jiu-Jitsu <laughs> saved the day. And it saved the jujitsu guy. Yes, and those who are arguing that this one is the best submission ever are saying that because he had four rounds and he didn't have to do anything, yeah. he still did it and finished it. And this is who we know in DJ. This is why he's being considered one of the best, if not the best of all time, because he finishes fights, he goes 100%, yeah. he always wants to seal the deal, and he doesn't take a decision. If he doesn't have to, he's not taking a decision. He has a couple, but he'd rather not. And this shows it how much control he had over a very game opponent in Ray Borg, you guys. Unbelievable. Thank you everyone for the fights. Thank this building for Jiu Jitsu for so many years. 10 years we've been in this building and we're moving on, you guys. New location, 2440 West Carson Street, Torrance, California, 90501. Only a couple miles from here. We've just outgrown this place and it's been three or four years since we've outgrown it. We're very excited. This is Monday today. The next Monday, we're starting classes in the new location. So this is our last full week here at this location. October 16th? Yes. First class, October 16th. You guys are all invited, you know, if you can make it out really? here. Yeah. We're inviting everyone to come. To our <laughs> to well, come. maybe not on the 16th. Yeah. Come on like the 17th and the 18th and the 19th and the 20th. We yeah. have like 700 people in a class. Don't yes. come. If you live in the area, come. If you don't live in the area, make your way out here. Many of you guys live all around the world and you always said, I'm going to come to Artesia, the Gracie Academy. Yes. You missed the opportunity. I'm sorry, <laughs> but luckily there's a new and bigger and better and stronger and faster location opening. You guys, everything, so it's amazing. okay that you missed it. And make that trip to California, you guys. If you're hesitant, this is our regular crew right here. Panel my friends over here a little bit. These are the regular Monday morning students. You come in here, you get to train with them. They're very welcoming. People visit from all over the world. Where was the guy from today? The Netherlands. This guy came from the Netherlands. Yes. Came here, stopped in LA, came from did the a Netherlands. class. Everyone took care of him. It's safe, you guys. It's friendly. It's jujitsu. It's all of us. If you come to America, you, there's a few places you want to see. If you come to California, you want to hit Los Angeles. If you're in Los Angeles, you have to go to Disneyland. What else? The Hollywood sign? I don't know, Venice Beach, if you're a little crazy. <laughs> what else? <laughs> and the Gracie That's Academy. That's what's up, you guys. Or Gracie University. Yes, you guys. And as a, um, this is the first time we're formally announcing the change of the name of the new location. Calling it Gracie University will be this new mega center for jujitsu. And the reason we changed it was initially, the Gracie Academy was a singular location, and we created Gracie University, the website and the out outward global reach, as kind of a, an expansion division online to reach people all over the world. And it used to be kind of a subdivision of the Gracie Academy. Now, there are more people learning through CTCs, through Gracie Garages, through Gracie University, through everything that that communication medium has created. More people are learning outside of this building than in this building. So our, 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 our Torrance Academy becomes a kind of a subdivision of the global expansion efforts. And as a result, that is reflected in the Gracie University name of this new Jiu Jitsu Heaven location at 2440 West Carson Street. We can't wait to have you guys on the new mats, bigger, softer, nicer, more parking, everything you wanted, it's gonna make it happen. If you're in the South Bay, you have no excuse. If you're anywhere else around the world, you guys know how to connect with us and make it happen. Much respect, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you guys. That's so